guys to the our video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe, share, and favorite. And thank you guys so much for 1,010 subscribers. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. Thank you guys so much. I forgot to thank you guys in my last video, but thank you so much. I can't believe I already have 1,000 subscribers. I just recently had my one-year anniversary, so thank you guys so, 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 so much. I can't even thank you guys enough. But anyways, this video is just going to have basically food stuff in it, like food... DIYs, if that's what you want to call them. I don't know. DIY food. I don't know. Anyways, it's going to have a red velvet Oreo milkshake, or just a milkshake, basically. Some cake donuts, and also some cake batter dip, and some other fun little things. In the description box will be some activities and things you can do with your friends. Sorry that I wasn't able to film the activities of me and my friends doing them and whatever, but the reason why is because most of you probably know, but I'm not allowed to show my face on YouTube yet. So I really apologize about that. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the video. Anyways, I put a lot, a lot, a lot of time into this video editing it. And I had so much fun filming it and as well as editing it. It was a lot of fun to film and edit as I just said. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking. Let you guys watch the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the foods that I showed you guys how to make. And don't forget to check out the description box for activities and other fun things that you and your friends can do. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into the video. The first real idea is to kind of have your own pizza bar, I guess you could call it. So basically just have like your pizza crust and then whatever toppings you want. So I have pizza sauce, pepperoni, Canadian bacon, and mozzarella cheese. But you can have whatever else you like to put on your pizza like black olives, pineapple, or anything that you like to put on your pizza. The pizza crust that I used was a package. It was by great value. That was the brand of it. And it was just like a powdered pizza crust that you added water and then you mixed it up and then let it sit for like 10 minutes or something to let it raise. And then I just shaped it into little mini pizzas. So that's what I use, but you can also buy pre-made crust or whatever you would like to use for your pizza crust. So here are the pizzas I made. As you've seen, I just put sauce, Canadian bacon, and cheese on them, and they were really good. The next food idea is a red velvet Oreo milkshake. Not only is this delicious, but it's only three ingredients and it's super easy to make. All you need is a milkshake maker or a blender, milk, vanilla ice cream, or you can use chocolate ice cream if you would like to, and some red velvet Oreos. You can make this so customizable because you can use any kind of Oreos that you would like. So to start, we're just going to scoop some ice cream into our milkshake maker cup or into your blender. And then I just took my milk and I added about two tablespoons total probably. I like a thicker milkshake, but you can add however much milk if you want it to be a bit more liquidy or thicker, depending on your preference. And now that I just chopped up my Oreo in a bag, you could also use a food processor or something like that. And I just put it into my milkshake maker. And this is what it looks like, and now we're just going to mix it all up. And this is what it looks like after I mix it all up. This was so, so good. I definitely recommend making this. So now you can pour it into a cute cup, add some whipped cream, some crushed Oreos on top of the whipped cream, and then add a cute straw, and enjoy. It's so delicious. The next thing I like at my party is a popcorn bar. So here at this popcorn bar, I have, of course, my popcorn, mini M&Ms, peanut butter chips, mini Reese's Pieces, marshmallows, mini chocolate chips, and Reese's. And I would recommend chopping up the Reese's, but I just didn't because I just didn't. But anyways, that's what I like to have in my popcorn bar. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to mix in with your popcorn. So some movie ideas would be Secretariat, Pocahontas or Pocahontas 2, Despicable Me, Frozen, and How to Train Your Dragon 2 are some of my favorites. They are kind of older ones besides Frozen and How to Train Your Dragon 2, but I absolutely love all these movies. And let me know in the comments below what your favorite movie for a sleepover is. Another fun idea is an ice cream sundae bar. So of course you have to have ice cream. I usually use vanilla ice cream, but you can use whatever kind of ice cream you want. Hot fudge, caramel, mini chocolate chips, peanut butter Oreos, or just regular Oreos, graham crackers, peanut butter chips, little candy bars like Three Musketeers, or Snickers, or whatever your favorite candy bar is, mini marshmallows, mini M&Ms, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, mini Reese's Pieces, and marshmallow cream. One of my all-time favorite ice cream sundaes is to scoop some vanilla ice cream into a bowl, then add some marshmallow cream, and then mix that all together, and then add some mini chocolate chips, crush up some graham crackers, and top that off. So good. You basically have a s'mores sundae, which is the best thing ever, especially during the summertime. So I definitely recommend trying that. Let me know in the comments what you like to put on your ice cream. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to make this cake batter dip, which tastes so delicious. The things you'll need are a bowl, plain low-fat yogurt, whipped topping, a funfetti cake mix, and sprinkles are optional. And you'll also need animal crackers to dip. So now that I'm taking our bowl, we're just going to add in all of our ingredients. So first off is one cup of plain low-fat yogurt. Next, you're going to add in half a container of Cool Whip. And mine was just an 8-ounce container, so I added half of that. Then we're going to add in half of our Funfetti cake mix. Not the entire package, just half of the package. 
and then you're just going to give that a good stir dip is ready to eat and if you're gonna serve this the same day you can go ahead and add sprinkles if you're gonna wait a day to serve this I would recommend putting the sprinkles on just before you serve it so that way the sprinkles won't like dissolve into the dip and you can also add some animal crackers on top if you would like but otherwise you're done so yeah that's how you make this delicious cake batter dip and I can't even tell if there's yogurt in it so that's just me if you have a really strong taste for yogurt then you probably would like this but otherwise I think it tastes really good. Next I'm going to show you guys how to make these baked red velvet cake donuts. These are so good and perfect for breakfast or a snack. They only take a few ingredients so all you need is a donut pan. I got mine from Michael's. A spatula. Two tablespoons of softened butter. I'm using light butter but you can also use regular butter. A bowl. Three fourths cup of milk. Two eggs and a red velvet cake mix. You can use any flavor of cake mix that you would like to. Funfetti, chocolate, whatever your favorite kind of cake mix is. So now then basically all you have to do is put all the ingredients into a bowl. So the cake mix, the milk, the butter, and the two eggs. And then mix that all up. I use a spatula but it would be 10 times faster and 10 times easier to use a hand mixer. So yeah, take note. Use a hand mixer instead if you have one. If not, a spatula works just fine or even a fork would probably work too. Now that our batter is all mixed up and I'm just going to take a gallon Ziploc baggie, put it into a tall cup and I'm going to pour the batter into my Ziploc baggie and that just makes it so much easier to put the batter into the donut pans because since the donut pans are kind of a weird shape and it's hard to get the batter into the donut mold without getting it all over the pans. So as you can see, I'm just putting the Ziploc baggie into a tall cup and I'm going to pour the batter into the baggie. Then I just snipped a tip off and I'm just going to put the batter inside of a really, really greased donut pan. Make sure you grease it really good. It's very important so that your donuts will come out without having to use a knife and tearing your donuts apart. So I would recommend only going around like once with your batter. I poured mine two thirds full like the recipe said and they ended up being double the donut basically. It looked like two donuts stacked on top of each other. That's how big they were. If you want that big of donuts, that's totally fine. Then we're just going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then we're just going to stick them in there for 10 to 15 minutes. It really just depends on your oven. I would recommend sticking them in there for about 10 minutes and then taking a toothpick and inserting them into your donut. If the toothpick comes out clean, that means your donut is done. If it comes out with some dough on it, don't worry. Just stick it in there for like two more minutes and then just keep checking them. And once your toothpick comes out clean, that means they're done. So now then, these are what my donuts turn to look like. They don't really have a hole because I overfilled them as I said, so I'd recommend only going around the ring once as I said. But anyways, I just used some cream cheese frosting. You can use a from scratch recipe. I just used a container of cream cheese frosting that I got from Walmart. Then I just melted it in the microwave for about 20-25 seconds until it was kind of liquidy. Then I poured it into a dish that my donuts would fit down in. And I just took my donut, flipped it upside down, dunked it into the frosting and then pulled it out, let some of the excess drip off and put it onto a plate and let them kind of dry so that the frosting kind of hardens. Before the frosting hardens, if you want to add some toppings, go ahead and do that. As soon as you dip them into the frosting, you can add sprinkles, any kind of cereal really. I've seen lots of people put cereal on their donuts. It looks pretty good. And you could also add mini chocolate chips, whatever you want to put on top of your donut. I'm sure it'll taste good. If you'd like to send me your recreations, you can send them to me on Instagram by DMing them to me. Or you can also use the hashtag sleepover with CNT on Instagram to show me your recreations of any of the things that I showed you guys how to make in this video. I would love to see you guys' recreations, so don't forget to use the hashtag sleepover with CNT. That's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to click the screen to watch my last video, which was a DIY Polaroid, and you can also make that into a magnet. Don't forget to check out both of my Instagrams, both of my YouTube channels, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye, guys!